So this is our um, new Piston Bully 600 level red winch cap. Uh, it's the non-polar version, but we got a polar blade on it, which makes a huge difference. It's probably about twice the size of the standard blade on a normal 600. Uh, we've got this Teflon coating on our blades for pushing man-made snow so it doesn't stick so bad. You got your battery isolator there and that's engine oil dipstick, which is really handy. You don't have to climb up anything to get at it. The AdBlue filler. Unfortunately that drips a little bit, but such is life with AdBlue. And there's the after treatment system there. Um, big, kind of looks aggressive, so we can deal with it. Uh, we added this box that's not factory. Um, inside it, we keep our chains and straps for winch anchors and our hydraulic block off caps. When you remove the tiller, they go in and where those hoses go. That's the tiller on the back there. Um, generally, if we're doing big push jobs, we'll remove that because it's just a, a weigh about a ton. So it's a lot of extra weight hanging off the back of the machine. If you don't need it, it's good to remove it. And uh, that's the tiller. Chops up snow. Snow passes through the chamber here and breaks apart. And then those mats leave the corduroy finish behind the machine, which is what everybody skis on. Uh, yeah, this is the 4.6 plus ton winch. I think it pulls up to about five tons, which makes a very big difference on your steep slopes. As you can see, the winch cable gets pretty dirty. Uh, this is a capstan winch system. Which is, um, it's a great system. I really like the winch in these things. It's got a cable feeder and pulley system there, which reels the cable onto the drum and off the drum so that you don't get any, well, you shouldn't get any snagging or curling or all the rope reeling over the top of itself. Um, we actually shortened our winch rope a bit this season. There's your fuel filler there. You've also got another one under, under this panel here. I'm not actually sure why they do that in this model, but for some reason usually 600s have two fillers. So if you walk around inspections on these, there's your hydraulic oil level. Again, you don't have to climb on the machine to see it. And uh, your coolant is up in there. Pretty easy to check over in the morning. I do climb up and check the cable just to make sure it's lapping the drum properly and make sure that nothing's broken or falling to pieces in there. That's your winch hook. And if you look carefully enough, you'll find the only thing that we've actually broken, we've done 1200 hours on this machine so far, and the only thing that's failed on it is this, which broke yesterday. Not entirely sure why. It looks like where that bend is, maybe there's a weak point in the steel. But other than that, this has been a really reliable machine. It's worked every day that it could. Um, hasn't broken down, it's just, it starts every time and does the job. It's a really good machine, been really impressed with it. So jumping in the cab. Highly adjustable seat. It's all air bladders and air adjustable suspension seat. Okay, throttle pedal down there. I keep my gloves there because the window heater keeps them dry. Stereo. The stereo system in this machine is the best stereo system of any machine I've ever driven. It's all the construction equipment, everything that I've ever driven. It's an amazing stereo. 
Uh, I think there's a subwoofer under the passenger seat there. So you get great bass and yeah, it's, uh, it's a good place to spend a, a long shift. Here's your dash down here. Believe it or not, there's a lot less buttons on this dash than the older models. Um, all pretty straightforward. To anyone who's actually operated these things before, they'll know that's that's pretty straightforward. Main winch controls are there, and your boom controls there. All your lights. That's for blade float. Adjust your track tension to slacken them off if you need to take the tracks off. Seat belt tensioner. It's got a safety harness for the steep stuff. You hit that button, and then the uh, the harness will tension itself and hold you in the seat properly. Uh, that's for your mirrors. Use this little toggle on top to adjust your mirrors. Uh, that's your rear wiper, front wiper, rear window heater, side window heaters, and front windscreen heater. These are your tiller controls. Just turn the tiller on and off. Uh, that's automatic lift when you're in reverse. So if you hook reverse, it'll lift by itself so you don't back over your own tiller does happen believe it or not and really good function to have in the cab your tiller lock so the main function of the tiller when it's um, free it flexes so if you've got soft snow or you're doing a landing on a park feature or something you can lock it and then you don't end up with sort of the curved edge there's some other controls down here climate control I actually know what these two do, I've never used them before. Um, you got your reverse alarm, forward alarm if you've got people in front of you and you want to make the reverse alarm noise to get their attention. And your horn, that's cruise control up and down. Again, I don't use cruise control, that's not something I need. So moving on to the joystick. Again, probably looks really complicated to someone who's never sat in one of these before, but I know I've said it about the stereo, but this is the best joystick I've ever used in, in a push machine before. It's, it looks complicated, but it's really well laid out. Um, that's how your hand sits in the machine. I should probably clean the oil off my hand, shouldn't I? Um, but everything's easy to reach. The only one that's awkward is that. We'll get into that later, but... Uh, you got your tiller lift and drop and your dumbo ears, um, your tiller cut, so cut deeper, cut shallower, those are your wiper blades, front wiper, rear wiper, this is your tiller swing, so you can swing the tiller manually left and right, you lock it with that button so it'll stay directly behind you wherever you set it, and that's float, and if you hold it down that's your uh, auto tracer, which sort of adds a bit of resistance and um, counters where you're tracking so if you have to climb up a slope it'll actually help your duck swaddle up the slope um, and there's your pressure so more pressure on the tiller or up pressure on the tiller or you click it to put it in float up here is your tiller speed so that's just to spin the drum faster or slower depending on what sort of snow you're working with and what conditions are underneath so you don't damage it or clog it and this one up here is your winch tension. So if you need more winch tension, you roll it to the right and it'll pull harder. And obviously wind it off the other direction. And you click it in and that gives you your active boom. Um, I'll see if I can make a video on that later. But basically, Piston Bully has a great system with their winch, which is their active boom, where your winch boom actually has a resistance on it. So if you're climbing a slope and your winch anchor is over there in the corner there by those blue containers um, and you're needing to go straight, you can hit your active winch on and it'll actually pull in the opposite direction you're trying to track. So it'll keep the machine going straight and pull the winch sideways, um, which really helps in poor conditions. Right now there are there are some negatives. It is a great machine, but nothing's perfect. Now one of the things that gets to you after you've driven the um, competitor's machine, dare I say it, is the speed of the winch boom there. 
So you've got the button there for swinging the boom left and right manually. Get it in position for where you can hook it up to your anchor. And it's not super fast. Um, but you don't have to use it that often, so it's not a massive drawback, but it is just a pain. And to be fair, um, I think maybe the speed of the swing on that thing is due to the active boom. It's probably a bit of a pain engineering wise to try and get it to move faster. I'd have to add extra gears into the slew ring or, or something. I don't know, I'm not a mechanic or an engineer, but um, yeah, it's a small peeve, but Sometimes when you're in a hurry, it is a little bit irritating. And nothing that really ruins the machine. Uh, what you do have on here is cable reel out function, which is really handy. Um, it's really simple. Just have that button and I walk outside. So all you gotta do, they grab your um, hook off the bracket there and just drag it. You don't have to pull it or anything, it just reels it out slowly. That's the joy of the capstan. No real effort. You can let it go, it's not going to run away on its own or anything. It's, um, yeah, it's really effortless, which is great when you're climbing towers. Not all of our anchors are on the ground, most of them aren't. So it's a bit easier to pull that up the ladder behind you and hook it onto a step than having to drag that pull on it and um, maybe have a remote or something, that would be a pain, wouldn't it? These machines also have an excellent reversing camera, really clear. The mirrors are really good as well and easy to adjust with your little toggle on the dash there. So, you should have no excuse for backing into anything. I'm sure people will still manage it, but. So this is the bottom of one of our winch slopes here. Um, we have shortened our cable this season. So this here tells you how much cable you have left on the drum. Obviously 188 meters. And this gauge tells you how much tonnage you're pulling on your winch. So at the moment it's on the minimum, which is 800 kilos. That just keeps a little bit of basic tension on the winch. Sometimes that's all you need if the conditions are good. Um, but otherwise, it's fairly straightforward. You wind that dial there and that'll wind up the winch tension. Wind it back and it'll let it off. Which you can actually see in the cable there. feature on the screen there you've got your angle gauge which is really handy when you're actually trying to follow a particular grade um, this run we do tend to build reasonably steep um, and stick to a certain grade and if you're doing landings on park features or takeoffs it's also quite handy you can have it on the main menu when you're pushing as well to keep track of what grade you're sitting on so probably my favorite thing on this machine is this joystick. It's got all the normal functions like for your blade drop and lift, forward and backwards, which is the same on snow cats, bulldozers, wheel loaders, all that sort of thing. Um, but you've also got your tilt, left and right. Again, pretty standard. Um, but then you've got slew, so turning the blade left and right to wing snow. That's just done on turning the joystick, turning it left and right with your wrist. And it's very minute, you don't have to move your wrist much. 
um, and also your blade curl so it's got a double jointed joint I suppose you call it so it actually flexes in the middle and that gives you your curl which is really good so basically the blade does everything that your wrist does and uh, makes it really easy for pushing um, pretty standard on piston bullies you got a button back here for uh, opening the wings it's the same left and right as open and close on that forward and backwards is open and close on this side uh, but you've also got sort of a dual movement I guess you hold the outside button there pull them both back and it pulls back both wings at the same time and obviously forward to close them uh, your wipers are right there really easy when you're pushing you don't have to take your hand off the joystick you just click it up and then the back one for your back window real easy and then on here you got your cut which is there that changes the depth your drum is going into the snow um, your pressure is there to the pressure so that's float up pressure and down and then your tiller speed is down there and your chamber or snow flaps whatever you want to call them is there to open open and close the flaps in the tiller to let more snow in or less and you also got dumbo air pressure here so your little dumbo airs on the outside which is that button there And then that one for the right hand side. Um, yeah, so you've got pressure for that. You can wind that up and down. So they actually add or decrease the pressure on the rams pushing your dumbo ears into the snow. Which is, uh, it's probably a bit gimmicky, but it does help in some conditions.